The Portuguese Man of War Visalia Visalis by Megan Rosewood What does the iceberg theory of consciousness have to do with the Portuguese Man of War? What you see above the surface does not represent the entire siphonophore. The colony of zooids is a total of four. They physiologically support each other at a distance offshore. Let's start at the surface. Meet the lovely nematophore. With a chamber of gases, it floats forevermore. Along the tides and currents it will ride and carry, its beautiful colored body also light and airy. If threatened, it can deflate and hide below the surface to avoid becoming bait. To refill, the bilaterally symmetrical sail will collect atmospheric gases, nitrogen, carbon monoxide, argon, and oxygen into the sail it passes. So what anchors this lovely float down? A collective of structures that reach downwards towards the ground. The dactyl zooid reaches the farthest, over 50 meters it trails, into the depths of 165 feet this metric measurement entails. The tentacles feel and search for food to capture. The nidocytes fire and a fish it enraptures. The struggling prey's life will soon depart. The toxins exuded stop the beating heart. Once entwined in the super long tentacle strands, the dactyl zooid delivers its conquest to the next tissue in demand. The gastrozooids, all eager with delight, will take the poor prey and digest with all of its might. Their two worm-like structures will engulf all around. Secreting gastric juices, they break the fish down. Into proteins, carbohydrates, amino acids, and fats, the communal stomach is filled full, no more hunger to combat. Each takes their full share of this lovely feast. Once they've had their fill, the excess is released. The last colony member that has yet to be described is the part of the siphonophore that will continue the species to survive. The gonozooids have a special pack. Either male or female, the opposite sex, they do lack. Grouping multiple sets of colonies in one location, spawning together at once will create unique genetic formations. Asexual budding is also thought to occur. Current knowledge is shaky and we are not so sure. Small siphonophores contain all of the DNA to make a new clan. Pneumatophores grow right or left with an intended plan. This ensures that the sails will carry batches of young man o' war in directions contrary. Distributed over oceans far and wide, they span a band around the mid latitudes in warm seas they prefer to reside. In the U.S., they are found from the Florida Keys to the Gulf of Mexico. If the weather is unpredictable, they might be seen in more temperate zones. As macro holoplankton, they will spend their entire life unless the man o' war is brought nearer to the shore to cause a bit of strife. Beachgoers scurry and flurry in a hurry to avoid a stinging sore. The tentacles hurt the human skin, and as for economic importance, it can also affect tourism. There are few predators that are immune to the toxins within. For example, the leatherback turtle can eat a siphonophore without a hurdle. As for symbiotic relationships, the nomius prefers to reside, feeding from the gastrozooid staying safely alive. The beautiful Glossudae nudibranch feasts, takes bites and transfers nidocytes to its skin, its own toxins increased. So now you have a complete picture. I'm not a jellyfish, which is singular. I'm a colony of four. If I lost my gonozooids, I could not mate. If I lost my gastrozooids, I could not eat and would deteriorate. If I lost my pneumatophore, I would sink down to depths too great. By losing my dactyl zooids, food could not be brought up straight. I am a colony of four. Physalia physalis, Portuguese man of war, the beautiful siphonophore. Mm -hmm.